Psalms 107, Psalms 107, starting in verse number one. So good to be in the house of the Lord, amen. The psalmist says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Amen? <clears throat> for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. amen. <laughs> Trying to get an amen out of you. <laughs> Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Like what the psalmist says, that he brought me up out of the miry clay. Amen. I was way down in that old miry clay too. He set my feet upon a rock, established by going and put a new song in my mouth. Hallelujah. Then it says here, the ones did not do verse one and two. It says in verse four, they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Verse six, then they cried unto the Lord. Oh, they remembered the Lord when they was in need. Oh, we, we remember the Lord, you know, when things ain't working quite right. But when everything's hunkadory, we don't remember him. That's why we get in need, because we don't remember him. It says, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. Remember, they couldn't find no city because they wasn't praising him. Amen. And he led them to a city of habitation. Verse 8. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today most of all for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us today then no matter what, we praise you, God. Father, that praise keeps us in deliverance, keeps us, Lord, Father, with your presence with us, keeps us in good standing, and, and you're abiding with us. We understand that what praise does. And Father, we thank you today. We praise you today. We honor you today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Think about it this morning. If praise can get us out of problems, why can't praise keep us out of problems? Amen? I mean, there's a lot of stories we could talk about this morning about what happened when people begin to praise God. And if miracles can happen when we begin to praise Him and He comes to our rescue and His presence is there, why not in good times, praise him so that we don't get in those lean times. Makes sense to me. I don't know about you. I mean, remember over in, in Joshua in the sixth chapter, remember when Jericho was standing in the way that they, they went around the city every day one time and on the seventh day they went around seven times and nothing has happened. They marched around and around and nothing has happened until they did something they praised him. When praise started, the wall started coming down. When they started praising him, they blew the shofar. And when they blew the shofar, the people gave a shout. That means a praise unto God. And the praise brought the walls down. Hallelujah. If the praise can bring the walls down, maybe praise can keep the walls down. What do y'all think? Makes sense to me. I'm a pretty simple man. And I still understand that. The Bible said in Acts in the 16th chapter, verse 25, and it says at midnight. Now, I don't know what they did up to midnight. The Bible said that they was beat with many stripes. They was thrown into the inner prison. 
It was dark, dark in there because the jailer, remember, had to spring in with a light. It was dark. Probably couldn't even see their hand. And so they had gotten themselves into this predicament. And what did they do? I don't know up till before midnight, but I know at midnight, finally, they come to their senses and says, look, I think praise can help us. And so they said uh, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and what did they do? Shout it out. Saying what? Praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them, and suddenly, when they praised, suddenly there was a great earthquake. You know what that earthquake was? It was God coming in because God inhabits the praise. He comes to where praise is. Hallelujah. Amen. So that the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately, immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were, were loose. Let me tell you, if praise uh, can open up uh, the prisons, uh, open up the doors uh, and loosen all the bands on the people, if praise can do that, surely praise can keep them open. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? See, so often we pray, 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 and nothing happens. Uh, we forget the praise, 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 praise. It's what inhabits us, God's presence in our life. You know, if someone was to come to your door and knock on your door, and he's dead now, Ed McMahon, and say, you just won Publisher's Clearing House. I don't know if anybody's ever won with it, but anyhow. And you just won $100,000. The way you would react was, thank you very much. <laughs> and close the door. I think not. That's why he said in Mark's Gospel 11, chapter verse 24, he said, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. In other words, act like you already got it. Act like you got that $100,000. Woo! And you call it everybody. He said, go ahead and act like you got it. If you believe you got it, act like it. Praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Amen. That's what he's telling us to do. That's what he's reminding us of. Oh, that if man would just praise the Lord. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. Amen. It says in 2 Chronicles of the 20th chapter, when the enemy was surrounding them uh, and they didn't know what to do, uh, God had already told them, you don't have to fight in this battle. Uh, so often we wear ourselves down fighting the battle. All you need to learn to do is praise. Amen. God sent a man of God to, to Jehoshaphat and said, you have no need to fight in this battle. Just praise him. Just praise God. Amen. And so what happened? Uh, it says uh, in 2 Chronicles 20 and 22, and when they began to sing and to what? Praise. praise. Uh, the Lord set and the Lord set the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, uh, which means to overshadow, become dim. Uh, the enemy that's overshadowing you this morning, uh, trying to stop your praise, start trying to stop you up uh, and keep you down. Uh, he said, if you learn to praise, it'll blow that out of the water. Amen. Then get out of there. God has set ambushments against Moab. That means to cut down something that's just trying to destroy your life. If you'll learn to praise, I'm telling you, God has set ambushments that'll blow them out of the water. Also, Mount Sir, which means a storm or fear. You got some kind of fear this morning or some kind of storm you're going through. If you'll learn how to praise God, them storms will move and the sunshine will begin to shine again. Amen. Well, Brother Whitfield, I don't feel like praising. Man, I don't think you can, can afford not to feel like praising him, amen. amen. Glory to God. The Bible said that, that Jacob worshiped God leaning on a staff when he was so weak he couldn't stand on his own, but he held on to that staff and worshiped God, hallelujah. Amen. amen. Glory to my God. Ain't God good to us? He says, wherefore, 
In other words, it said that they were all smitten. All them enemies were smitten when they began to sing and praise. Uh, that's why he said in Hebrews uh, 12 and 12, wherefore lift up hands which hang down, amen, uh, and the feeble knees. Uh, remember the time, uh, you remember the time when uh, Moses was there and uh, uh, um, 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 uh, Amalek uh, was out there in front of them, the enemy, and Joshua was down there fighting. Uh, the Bible said that when Moses would raise his hands, it represents praising God. When Moses was praising God, uh, that uh, Joshua would win in the battle, uh, but when his arms got, his hands got tired and started down, uh, then the enemy would start working against uh, and defeating Joshua. And the, uh, who Aaron and her stood on each side and stood him on a stone uh, and held his hands until the going down of the sun uh, and they discomforted the enemy destroyed them why because somebody was praying can I get somebody just to praise him this morning can, I'm telling you there's sickness all over the land uh, we're hurting uh, their disease can I get somebody that'll praise him uh, we need to learn to praise him hallelujah Glory to God, hallelujah. Let me tell you, if the enemy knows there's power in praise, what do you think he tries to get the church to do? Shut up. Well, I ain't shutting up. I would have praised him more and more and more and more and more. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know the 10 lepers? They come to Jesus. Jesus, what you want? He said, we'll be cleansed. He said, go show yourself to the priest. You know why he told them to do that? Because they were still under the Mosaic law. The Mosaic law, the priest had the authority to tell them they was clean or unclean. So he said, go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible said, as they went, they was cleansed. As they obeyed. And one of them saw that was cleansed and he came back and he praised him. He said, thank you. That's praise. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to stop what I'm doing and say, thank you. Hallelujah. The Bible said, uh, Jesus looked at him and said, were there not ten, where's the other nine? Amen. That's about like the church is. You got one out of ten praised him. Come on now. Huh? The Bible said that Jesus looked at him and says, thy faith have made thee whole. Uh, I'm telling you that disease may have eat off a hand or toe or finger, but let me tell you what happened when he praised. Uh, maybe a old hand was missing, uh, and when he started praising, a hand came back out. Uh, amen. Uh, I'm telling you, he'll make you whole when you learn to praise him. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Psalms 107. Let's go back where we the chapter we started with. Psalms 107 verse nine. For he satisfieth the longing soul, does he not? And filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Does he do that to you? I ought to praise him. I ought to praise him, amen? But then people don't praise him. They get their, their satisfaction of their longing soul and they fill their hungry soul with goodness and then they get satisfied and sat down and never thank him. What happens? Verse 10. Because they didn't praise him, they sit in darkness and the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron because they rebelled against the words of God and co uh, contemned uh, the, uh, the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, he brought down uh, their hearts with labor. Remember the Old Testament uh, that Satan, uh, you know, God had to take responsibility for everything. Because they didn't praise God. God wasn't in their presence, so Satan moved in. And what happens? It brought their soul down. They fell down, and there was none to help. What happened, verse 13? Then they cried unto the Lord in, the, in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death. He break their bands asunder. Listen to what he says again. Oh, that men would learn something. Oh, that men would pray. Praise the Lord for his goodness and wonderful works to the children of men. That's what he's trying to tell us. Praise him in the good times. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Because if you'll praise him in the good times, when the lean time comes, you won't even notice it. That's what Joseph did. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He just listened to the Lord, did what God told him to do in the, lean, in the, in the good times, did he not? He stored up. That's what praise is doing, storing up. You're storing up blessings. You're storing up. And seven years they stored up. And then in the seven years of lean time, it didn't touch them. Why? Because they were stored up. I got me some praise stored up. And when the lean time comes, I don't even feel it. God's good. He said in, said in Psalms 22 and 3, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of of Israel. That word means to dwell. You dwell in the praises. It means to establish. It means to remain. It means to abide. Amen. That's what he's talking about. When we begin to praise God, God through, uh, through, uh, uh, through the praise manifest himself uh, and his glory and his grace uh, and his special presence uh, with his people when they praise him. Amen. That's what happens. God just comes in. Oh, they're praising me. Look here. Ah, you see what happens is Satan can't stand it. When you begin to brag on God, when you begin to praise God, he's, oh, I can't stand it. I can't stand it because he used to do that. And now he's got a destiny of the lake of fire and he's miserable and he wants you miserable. But if you'll praise the Lord, I'm telling you, he said, I can't, I gotta get out of here. I can't stand this. I can't hang around here anymore. Amen. Amen. That's what happens. Exactly what happens. Because God dwells where the praises are at. Amen. How many believe that? Amen. Go back to Psalms 107 verse 16. For he hath broken the gates of brass. He's delivered them. He has cut the bars of iron asunder. But they didn't praise him. They got delivered and satisfied. Amen. We come to church and we, we come in a form like this and we're, we're praised and we're standing up and we're praised and we're thankful. And when we leave here today, we forget all about it. Come on now. Oh, that's that church cross street. They do that. We don't do that. Yeah, right. Amen. <laughs> Help us, Lord. They didn't praise him. What happened? Verse 17. Fools. Because of their transgression and because their iniquities are afflicted, their soul arborist all manner of meat. They hate it. And they draw near to the gates of death. What happens, verse 19? The end. The end. Oh, God, help me. Help me. Help me. I will remember the Lord then. Amen? Oh, yeah. When we're partying, we don't remember the Lord. But when we're mourning and weeping and crying, we remember the Lord. I said one time years ago, Church members throws a big party and invites everybody but the pastor. I've seen it happen in some churches. Invites everybody but the pastor. Oh, they partying down. Hallelujah. Whoa, we celebrating, celebrating, you know. But they didn't invite the pastor. But then they get in the hospital or get in need. Preacher, I'm inviting you over to my house. Pray for me. <laughs> Amen. My grandma died. I need you to do the funeral. We've been to church in five years, but won't you do the funeral? It's amazing. People come to church one time, and then they die years later, and they put on the end obituary that members of the Deliverance Tabernacle. <laughs> I said, members? I said, one time. Oh, well. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distress. Verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them. Boy, ain't God good. Ain't mercy wonderful? 
Amen. From their destructions. He said, verse 21, y'all said with me, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. How many times he says this in this chapter over and over and over again and trying to get it in our head that we need to learn to praise him. It's the secret of it all. Amen? Look what it said in Romans 1 and 21. Because that when they knew God, when they was delivered, they glorified him not as God. Didn't praise him. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened, uh, professing themselves to be wise. They became, y'all say it. Did he not say up there, verse 17, fools? Because we didn't praise him. Amen? Hmm. He says in Jeremiah, you know, there's the thing, uh, when I was at the plant, the maintenance department had a, on all of our equipment and stuff, machinery and everything, they did things called PM, preventative maintenance. It wasn't broke, but they just come and do a diagnostic and check everything and look at the wear and all this kind of stuff. And before it breaks down, they may replace a couple of parts. It's called preventative maintenance. You can do that spiritually, you know. Oh, yeah, do a spiritual check. Paul said, I examine myself daily. I do a PM checkup daily. Make sure my praiser's working. You know, you have to, you know, you do a PM on a, on a piece of a, a equip, drive of equipment. You got to blow the horn, check the brakes and all that. Sometimes you need to blow the horn spiritually. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, it's working good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Blow that horn. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just give you a check right now. Praise the Lord. 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 Oh yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I like that. Praise the Lord. 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 Let me tell you what, ladies. That praise will work and protect you. You ever get broke down town Charleston on a bad dark street? and you're afraid, uh, and you're having to walk down that dark street because you have no signal on your phone. Uh, just walk down the street and say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise. Ain't nobody going to message you. <laughs> they ain't going to mess you. Let that go by. There's something wrong with that one. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> well, the devil's the same way. Amen. Because he knows when you're praising the Lord, the Lord's with you. You see, he's not afraid of us. He's afraid of the one that's casting the shadow over us. Uh, the one that never leaves us, nor forsakes us, but is always with us. Hallelujah. Are y'all with me? You need to praise, do that around your house. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Go outside to your neighbors. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise. It might help them. Are you with me? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Store up the praises like Joseph stored up in the seven years of plenty so that when the seven years of lean time came, he didn't even notice it. Didn't even phase him. Why? Because it was stored up. Amen. That's why he said in Jeremiah 17 and 7, he said, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Uh, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters uh, that spreadeth out uh, her roots uh, by the river. And listen to this. Uh, and shall not see when he cometh. Why? Because I got praises uh, stored up. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I'm so blessed uh, and so stored up with praises uh, when lean time even tries to come uh, around me. I can't even feel it. Why? Woo. Because it's what it said. But her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Amen. It can be all around you, but it can't come in you. Amen. 
Why? Because your praises keeps it away. If it'll knock down the wall, if it'll open up the prison door, surely it'll keep them open. Don't y'all agree? Don't y'all agree? Back in Psalms 107 again. Here we go again. Verse 22. And let them sacrifice a pray. Sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving, which is praise. Let them that is delivered, even when you don't feel like it. Well, Brother Whitfield, I, I hear you up there preaching, but I just can't get into it this morning. That's the time you really need to be praising him. Amen? Sometimes you're at home and you feel like God's a million miles away. Hey man, you need to get you a big old dish pot or a big old spoon and start beating it on and praising the Lord, singing you a song. Praise the Lord, I'm gonna praise him in the morning, praise him at noontime. Praise him, praise him, praise him when the sun goes down. I'm just gonna praise him all day long and just go around. Let me tell you, you go in one room, maybe you don't feel a thing. You go in another room, maybe you don't feel a thing. But after a while, you're going to hit one of them rooms uh, and you're going to feel him there. Amen? Because he's there. We just got to get in tune. Hallelujah. Are you with me? He said, and declare his works with what? Rejoicing. I'm rejoicing night and day. Amen? Because the comforter abides, right? But they forget to praise. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters, uh, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commandeth and riseth the stormy wind, uh, which liveth up to, lifted up the waves thereof. Uh, they mount up to the heavens seemingly. They go down. This is what the enemy coming in may seem like to you. Uh, and they go down again. It's like, a, it's like he's over your head and you're drowning. Uh, that's what he wants to do to you. Uh, their soul is, is melted because of trouble. Amen. Uh, there's no praise there. They, they reel to and fro. Uh, they stagger like drunk men. Uh, and at their wits end. Uh, and what happens, verse 28, uh, then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. They remember the Lord uh, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. Uh, he maketh the storm a calm uh, so that the waves <coughs> thereof are still. Uh, then uh, are they glad. Oh, here they're glad now. He said, because uh, they be quiet. Uh, so he bringeth them uh, under uh, unto their desired haven. Uh, and y'all say it with me again. Uh, oh, uh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness uh, and for his wonderful works uh, to the children of men. Why can't we get that? Hebrews 13 and 15, it says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise of God continually. Continually. Does that mean, David, Brother David, we've got to go around all day long? I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. No, that's not what he's talking about. It's like Paul said, I pray without ceasing. He didn't go around praying all the time, but he had a consistent prayer life. I've got a consistent praise life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank him in the little things. Thank him in the little things. Because it's the little things that spoil the vine. Amen. If you don't thank him for it, you might not have it. Amen. So thank him in the little things. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks unto his name. He said in Habakkuk 3.17, uh, he said, you don't go by feeling. Look what he said. He said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit uh, in, be in the vines. Uh, the labor of the olive shall fail. The field shall yield no meat. Uh, the flock shall be cut off from the field and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Uh, yet uh, I will rejoice or I will praise uh, in the Lord. Uh, I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength uh, and he will make my feet uh, like hinds feet uh, and will make me to walk upon high places. Amen. That's what God wants to do and what gets us there is the praise of our God. Just a little bit more, amen? Ain't God good to us all the time? He said in Thessalonians 5, 18, he said, in everything, give thanks. He didn't say for everything, give thanks. 
A lot of people get bad things coming in their life, say, well, you know, what about me? In all things, you know, God, what is, what is that? Romans 8, 28. Uh, help me, Lord. <laughs> all things work together for good to them who love the Lord, to them who are the called. You know what the Bible says? He ain't talking about bad things. Only good things come from God. He didn't say for all things give things. He said in all things. Why? Because God is still God no matter what. No matter how I feel, God is still God. If I got a million dollars in the bank, but it'd be wonderful, God is still God. If I ain't got a red penny in the bank, God is still God. Amen? Amen. <laughs> That's what the psalmist said in Psalms 34 1. He said, I will bless or praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. She don't have the scripture, but Psalms 71 8, he said, Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. Wow. Look at the church. It says, in Jeremiah 49, 24, he says, Damascus is wax feeble. Why? Because they lost their praise. That's what's wrong with the church. We've lost our praise. You go in some churches this morning, even in Somerville, and the preachers up there talking about the goodness of God, and somebody shouts, Amen, brother. All the church will look around. Who said that? Amen? Amen? They've lost their praise. They've got spiritual laryngitis. Damascus is wax feeble and turn herself to flee. And fear hath seized on her. The church is fearing a disease on this earth. <laughs> I like what them old lepers guy did there in, in 2 Kings in the 7th chapter, you know. And they're sitting outside, and he said, "There's a famine in the land." Says, uh, "Let's go, let's go into the city, or, or let's go to the Syrian camp." And he said, "No, man, they'll kill us." And the one sitting there says, "Well, we, we're gonna die anyhow. We gonna stay here and die. If we go in the city, we're gonna die there. Ain't nothing in there. If we sit here, we're gonna die. Might as well just try it. Amen. Just try praising God. You're gonna die anyhow." We're all going to die one day. Just praise him. Are you with me? They lost their praise and they, they fleed from the enemy and, and they were seized upon. Anguish and sorrow have taken her as a woman in travail. How is the city of praise not left? He said, where is the church's praise? The city of my joy. Where is your joy at, church? Where's the joy? Where's the praise of my people at? Remember what Jesus asked the disciples when they woke him up to come up there to, to rebuke the storm? You know, when he rebuked the storm, he looked back at him and said, where's your faith? Where's your joy? Where's your praise at? Amen? Come back tonight. We're talking about, we're talking about joy and peace and all this other stuff. Amen? That's a good word tonight if you'll come back tonight. In fact, in fact, this next scripture is going to be part of tonight's message. He said it in Isaiah 61 because of verse 1, it talks about prophesying about Jesus, Spirit of the Lord upon me. He doesn't want me to, you know. Isaiah 61, 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes. What a trade. It's kind of like you, you driving your old jalopy. Had an old car, you know. I sold my old Ford Explorer the other day, and I had it. I bought it new in 1996. <laughs> Amen. At 25 years, half of our marriage, we had a little car. Amen. It's kind of sentimental, you know, kind of like, you know, I sold it. But it had a tail light, you know. It caught on fire one time, and I'd got another to replace it, just had to never put it in. And I mean, it, it had some issues and all, you know. It'd be about like me trading. Uh, carrying up to the Ford dealer and pulling in there and saying, look here, I want to look up a trade. You know, they come out there and they laugh at me. <laughs> what kind of idiot is this, you know? But all of a sudden, the guy comes out and pulls that pretty red pickup truck I got. You know, y'all seen it, King Ranch. 
pulls it up there. And he says, I want to do this for you today. I want to take your old car. It's weather torn and worn and bad shape. And I'm going to give you this brand new pickup truck. How would you feel? That's called beauty for ashes. What he did. He took our old broken down life. It was good for nothing. He said, I want to give you a brand new life. And write your name down in my Lamb's book of life. Make you a king and priest. Woo! Royalty, man. When I was a nobody, he took my nothing and gave me his everything. He wants to give you all of joy for mourning. What a trade. Garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That we might be called the trees. You know what trees do, right? Oh, trees of righteousness. Uh, the planting of the Lord. That he might be what? Say it. Glory five, Jeremiah 33, 10. He says, thus saith the Lord again, uh, there shall be heard in this place. That's what God wants in deliverance tabernacle, uh, which you say shall be desolate without man and without beast, uh, even the cities of Judah. That's what the enemy would love to do. Uh, the streets of Jerusalem uh, that are desolate without man, without inhabitants, uh, without beast. Uh, he said in verse 11, the voice of joy. He said, I want to hear the voice of praise again in deliverance tabernacle. I want to hear the joy in your hearts and your souls, the voice of gladness, uh, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride and the voice of them that say, praise the Lord of hosts, uh, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever uh, of them uh, that shall bring uh, the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, uh, for I will cause to return to captivity of the land as the first of God said, I want to put your first love back in you. Uh, I want that excitement that you used to have. I I want you to stir it up. I want you to feel it. I want you to know that I'm real. Hallelujah. That's what he's talking about. Those coming instruments. He said in 1 Peter 2 and 9, he said, but your chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises. We, let me tell you, if the church don't praise them, who in the world is? Show forth the praise of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Come meet, like that woman at the well, come meet a man. You got to meet this fella. Amen. Psalms 150. Listen to all it says here. He's signing off the Psalms all the way through. It's a lot of good praising and worship in Psalms, but look how he signs it off in Psalms 150. He says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. This is his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Uh, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Uh, praise him uh, with the sound of the trumpet. Uh, praise him with the psaltery and harp. Uh, praise him uh, with the tambour and dance. Uh, praise him with the string instruments and organs. Uh, praise him upon the loud uh, cymbals. Uh, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Uh, let everything, he said, let everything, whether you're saved or not, uh, whether you know God or not, he said, you got brand uh, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Can you stand to your feet and give him glory in the house? He said, if you got breath, uh, use that breath to praise me. Because I'm the one that put that breath in you. Oh, that men, uh, oh, that men would learn uh, to praise the Lord for his goodness uh, and his works toward the man. Woo! Glory to my God. Glory to my God. Lord, I just want to take this moment uh, and praise you. Lord, you kept me all last week. Uh, Lord, you've made me well. Uh, Lord, you've got my soul saved. Uh, Lord, I got food on my table. Uh, I got shelter over me. Lord, you protect me and my family. The angels watch over me. Uh, I have money in the bank. Uh, food in my cupboard, uh, Lord, strength in my body, salvation in my soul, uh, my name written in heaven, uh, 
Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. I magnify you. Glory. Glory. Glory to my God. Glory to my God. Glory to my God. All glory to God. He deserves all glory. All honor. All praise goes unto our God. The Lord God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Israel and me and my family and my brothers and sisters. Glory. This praise is going home with me. This praise is going home with me. Woo! Your presence is going home with me. <laughs> Lord, I want to say thank you. Lord, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Glory. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to praise you, God, for keeping us. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to praise you before the walls go up. I want to praise you before the chains go on. I want to praise you, God, that it keeps all of that off of me and away from me. Because when I praise you, Lord, your habitation is set up in my presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I worship you. I praise you. Just lift your hand and say, Lord, I just want to thank you. I worship you. You deserve all praise. God, all glory. There is none like you. Because it is, it is you that hath made us. I worship you. He said in Psalms 100, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that it is the Lord hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with saying praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good and his mercy endureth to all generations. There is none like you. I worship you, O oh, Prince of Peace. That is what you need to pray this morning. The altars are open for whatever need you need today. If you need salvation, that's the greatest praise is to come and give your life to God. You're praising Him by doing that. Say, Lord, I want to give you me. If you 